Here I am right now, standing before you free to talk. I should be 10 months into a 10 year prison sentence. The only reason why I'm standing here is because I happen to know about jury nullification and I used it. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller with Reason TV. I'm here with Ed Fortune, also known as the New Jersey Weed Man or the NJ Weed Man. He's a former marijuana dispensary owner, a medical marijuana patient, and an outspoken advocate for jury nullification who's successfully fought back multiple marijuana charges. Ed, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Jury nullification is what we call the outcome when essentially a defendant has violated a law, but the jury believes that the law itself is unjust or not properly applied in that situation. How does jury nullification play into your personal story and the cases that you fought? I was charged in New Jersey with, uh, with possession of marijuana and possession with intent to distribute, but I have always felt that the marijuana laws were wrong. Opinion poll after opinion poll shows that more than 50% of Americans believe that marijuana should be legal. Taking those numbers and putting it on the jury, I believe that uh, you know anyone charged with violating a marijuana uh, offense should be able to argue to his jury that the law is wrong and should be able to get about half the jury to say not guilty. So you had medical marijuana that you'd obtained in California mm -hmm. and brought to New Jersey. Then what happened? A police a, officer pulled you uh, over? A, a New Jersey state trooper uh, pulled up next to me at a light. Um, and you know, I don't know if it's because I got nervous or whatever, but he was paying attention to me. I had my front tires over the white line. And that was the pretext stop that he used to stop me. He said that I disregarded a traffic signal because my front tires were over the white line. Anyway, he pulled me over, he asked, he, he asked for a search, if he can search, I said no, it didn't matter. He put me in a car, he uh, got a judge a couple hours later to sign a search warrant, and they searched the car and they found my suitcase with my luggage, my toothpaste, and my medicine. They seemingly had all the evidence they would need to convict mm -hmm. you under the law. How did you win that case? Well, basically, I was guilty. <laughs> you know, uh, I got caught red-handed too. But the fact of the matter still goes back to most Americans believe that marijuana's laws are wrong. And that was what I argued. First of all, I represented myself. I think, I think people who, um, who are charged with a, viol uh, a, a marijuana offense should represent themselves. And I don't mean totally by themselves, but at least give their opening statement. So mm. you're identifying um, with the juror. The jurors can identify with you. And that's what I did. I gave in my opening statement, I basically introduced myself, you know, I removed myself from being a criminal and turned myself into the victim of a wrong law. And I explained how I smoked the joint this morning, I'm going to smoke a joint at lunchtime. And we should um, explain that you do have a very serious medical condition that you say the marijuana alleviates, right? Yes, I, I, um, I have bone cancer. I got, I, I got diagnosed uh, 13 years ago. Uh, I've had a couple operations where I've had tumors removed. Um, the last three years I've been suffering with one uh, a huge tumor in my right femur, which um, is basically just painful, it's pain levels. And I could get on Percocets and hydrocortinones and all kinds of pain medicines, but I have chosen not to. I didn't want to be addicted to those dangerous substances. Instead, I use natural marijuana for my pain. How much of your argument were you actually able to make that, you know what, this law is wrong, I'm, I'm the victim in this case? I imagine that would be a challenge to even be allowed to say that in a courtroom. So how much of that were you able to, to get in? All of it. <laughs> really? Yes, I, I, it was my mission, it was a whole plan of mine. I basically, I've been calling myself a New Jersey weed man for the last 15 years as I was advocating the legalization of marijuana, but I always had this plan, and the plan was jury nullification. I could have just easily called myself jury nullification man. Mm -hmm. So to me, when, when I went on trial, it was like my Super Bowl. Like it was like I've been planning for this for a long time. And um, basically, the judge and the prosecutor and all the pretrial uh, lead-ups tried to stop me from saying certain things. Right. I went around them, even just representing myself. You know, I'm giving my opening statement. Mm. The prosecutor gets to say what he thinks the case is about. Do I got to say what I thought the case was about. Do you think that's about. an a, that might be an advantage of representing yourself it's, because yeah. other because defense attorneys are probably afraid of being disbarred yes. and, and mm -hmm. other kind of punishments, right? 
I think it's a must. Uh, you know, I've been telling a lot of people over the internet how I did it, how, how to do it, mm -hmm. and I think that's like number one. You should, you should represent yourself. And even if you don't totally represent yourself, you should at least give your own opening statement. Because like I said, you're, you're removing yourself as the criminal in the matter, and you're turning yourself in the, into the victim. The number two thing is jury selection. Some people would argue that jury selection is number one. Mm -hmm. But juries aren't like superhuman, super Americans, super patriots. What they are, they're everyday average Americans. They, they have brothers, sisters, cousins that smoke marijuana on my jury I suspect at least two of them smoked marijuana I was looking for potheads on my jury um, I looked the stereotypical pothead you know I'm, I'm not to be honest with you I'm really highly motivated I you know I, I get things done as long as the government doesn't bother me there's a lot of pressure like you mentioned from the prosecutors from the judge who's going to be saying things like you need to follow the law as the law is explained to you. I have sat in mm -hmm. drug courtrooms where they say it's not about the morality of the, the law, it's not about if you like this person or not. Those are huge hurdles to overcome when a figure of authority is saying mm -hmm. that to a jury. How, what do you think was the most important thing in, in kind of breaking past all that? I think by representing myself and speaking for myself, um, I put myself into a different category. There's a lot of anti-lawyer animosity in, the, in, in America too. Hmm. So I capitalized on that. You know, I described my, my, my prosecutor in, 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 in not good terms. Um, and I felt like the, 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 the prosecutor and the judge and even the public defender were all on the same team where I described myself as uh, you know, being on We the People's team. And, you, the jurors, that's the team I'm on. And I actually begged them to save my life. I predicted that, that there was a, at least 50% of my jurors are gonna believe that marijuana should be legal. I said that I would probably get five or six. Uh, on my side, as it turned out, I got seven. Prosecutors, he decided to retry me again. And mm -hmm. the second trial, the only surprise that I had was that I got 12 this time. A kind of uh, broader critique that you hear of jury nullification is that, you know, laws come about through a process and this is kind of subverting that process. It's undermining the rule of law to just have these rogue juries deciding what's right and wrong. In some situations it could target minorities because an all-white jury might nullify a crime against a minority right. plaintiff. So how do you uh, respond to that kind of critique of nullification? Jury nullification absolutely does have, is a double-edged sword. I mean, it, it, it cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. Generally, I look at jury nullification as a barometer of, of public acceptance. Um, there are laws that we can look at and say that are wrong or were wrong, and the public starts accepting that prior to the legislators. The slavery acts of the 1850s, right. you know, the public wasn't down with slavery anymore, so they weren't going to help people getting prosecuted for, for helping slaves escape. During the alcohol uh, prohibition here in America, same thing happened. And that's why I think we're at that stage in history now with marijuana. Mm. Even if the person doesn't smoke marijuana, they're on the internet, they're reading the truth, they don't believe the lies that the government said, you know, the government is, has, has turned into the, uh, the emperor with no clothes. If anyone runs into trouble and finds themselves in a position where they need to defend themselves and they want to pursue the strategies you've been talking about, what's your advice? Where can they look for resources? What's the what are the first steps? The Fully Informed Jury Association. FIJA.org is an organization that puts out a lot of information. I got a lot of information from them. I have information on my website, njweedman.com. Represent yourself, speak to the jury yourself, actively and aggressively challenge the law. Say the law is wrong. Here I am right now, standing before you free to talk. I should be 10 months into a 10 year prison sentence. The only reason why I'm standing here is because I happen to know about jury nullification and I used it. I'm glad for that, and thank you very much, Ed Fortune, the New Jersey Weed Man. Thanks for talking with us. No for Reason problem. TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller.